Welcome! Today we're going to talk about surviving toxic people and the four essential tips to avoid when falling prey to malevolent characters. We all have seen horror movies and thrillers where the evil person kills innocent people. Since the dawn of time, people have been keenly interested in scary movies, no matter what the genre, be it horror, thriller, sci-fi or drama. We all love the suspension and anticipation surrounding the innocent being chased and stalked by the killer. When we think of a killer, we often usually assume a bad and evil person that is fearless and sadistic. This is how you see this in your neighbors, on Tinder, at work and in school. According to Howard and Zandt, the probability that a person is not a psychopath is almost 51% when they are honest and humble. One key indicator that a person is a psychopath is that he or she gets excited when there is danger. That is why they will describe a dangerous incident differently from normal people. Reason being that their effective empathy is very low but not zero. Affective empathy is how you respond to an emotion that you identify. Psychopaths have a hard time to respond with an appropriate emotion, an emotion that works with other people's emotion at any given emotional situation. A psychopath will therefore describe a train accident differently from normal people. And here's an example. If there's 10 people watching a train accident and one of them is a psychopath, the nine normal people will describe the train crash the same way. It was horrible and people got hurt. However, the psychopath will describe something completely different that is more exciting yes. and fun because they see the world without affective empathy and focused on other people's money and possessions. Yes, this is extremely sadistic, and that is also how you identify psychopaths in both women and men. When doing the hexaco test, the probability that you are Machiavellian if you are low in honesty and humility is 53.8%, according to Howard and Zandt. Machiavellian is not a mental disorder according to DSM-5, but is defined as duplicitous interpersonal style, a cynical disregard for morality and a focus on self-interest and personal gain. They are deceitful and manipulative and justify maintaining power and control. Just like a psychopath that is a subcategory of antisocial personality disorder, Machiavellians are both sadistic and low in morality. Morality is found in the personality trait of agreeableness and in the honesty and humility trait. It is defined in personality psychology as no need for pretense or manipulation when dealing with others. They are therefore candid, frank and sincere. Low in morality believes that a certain amount of deception in social relationships is necessary. It should be made clear that low immorality is not unprincipled or immoral, they are simply more guarded and less willing to openly reveal the whole truth. There is good news when it comes to being dishonest and callous with others in that Howard and Zand shows a 42.9% probability of narcissism. Narcissism is a diagnosis, a mental pathology, but is not a permanent mental illness you can become normal again. Narcissists associate only with people of high status and show up as being low in greed avoidance. If you are low in greed avoidance, you wear only Prada or Gucci shoes and expensive handbags, watches, cars, houses, boats and vacations. A narcissist is an individual who exhibits excessive self-focus. He or she has a strong need for admiration and a lack of empathy for others. They often display grandiose and a sense of entitlement coupled with a tendency to exploit and manipulate others for personal gain. But that in itself is deceiving since they can also be vulnerable narcissists which play the victim card and cries to be the center of attention. Narcissists have no confidence, which is high in neuroticism and low in extroversion. People often blame grandiose narcissists but are almost always deceived by someone's ability to stand out. The core problem in narcissists is that they have no self-esteem 
and can either compensate by always taking over in meetings and either running them or making sure everyone are talking about them. The more dangerous narcissist is the vulnerable one. Vulnerable narcissists are introverted and covert narcissists. They feel entitled without anyone noticing them getting into power where they then clear out any opposition through sadistic and immoral means. A good example is the Democratic Party in the US, which are actually doing this as we speak. Sadism is not a diagnosis as much as it is simply taking pleasure in others getting hurt. It doesn't mean a sadist needs to be one hurting others directly. A good example is female indirect aggression. It is something girls as young as 6 years old learn and it peaks around 11 years of age in school. They spread gossip and rumors and change out friends when they do not get along and get their way through reputation destruction, also known as cancel culture. This has been well documented in longitudinal studies done in Canada by Richard E. Tremblay. The reason why men always are the ones getting blamed is most likely due to the way men and women see men. Both men and women see men as perpetrators. Therefore, no one cares about men getting hurt in the process and are easy targets. I'm a man and I do not care much about other men either, just as the research and evidence supports. But I do care about women and children. And the reason for that comes from the saying, men and women see women as victims. In order for you to really understand malevolent people and how men and women work, you might want to watch this video about emotions to get the complete picture of how emotions work in you and in others. I thank you and I appreciate you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers!